Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 48th Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar. Welcome back uh, for those who are previous attendees, and a welcome to those who are new. Um, glad you could join us as we uh, do this webinar uh, out of uh, live from the West Coast and East Coast offices of Autodesk. Of course, if you're watching it on YouTube, it's not live anymore, sorry. But um, today, our presenter will be Dave Pothier. I, Volker Coco, will be moderating along with Naman Mysarwala. And our presentation is going to be the AutoCAD Express Tools. So, just briefly, a little bit about us. Um, again, I'm Volker Coco. I am out of the um, Manchester office, Dave. <laughs> I'm actually I, out of. I, I didn't have that. That was that was Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in the Lake oh, Oswego, uh, <laughs> Oregon office. Uh, so a typo. Okay, uh, awkward moment, if you will. Uh, and uh, moderating along with. Uh, with myself is Naman Mysarwala out of our um, he's out of our ex AutoCAD, Autodesk Expert Elite program. He's based in Westchester, uh, Cincinnati, and we're always glad to have him on board to assist us and provide his input. So I'm going to let Dave introduce himself in a moment, and uh, um, hopefully we can still get a presentation, in Dave. <laughs> All right, before we get started, uh, we do have some housekeeping. Uh, feel free to leave your questions in either the chat window. Uh, we'll be answering those throughout the webinar, but uh, after the webinar, we'll answer more as time allows. Uh, this session is recorded, as all of our uh, sessions are, and in the uh, reminder that you would have received about an hour ago, as well as the follow-up uh, survey, there will be some links to where you can find not only the webinars, but uh, the slide deck and any data sets that go with it. Uh, so those are available in the registration reminder, post-webinar survey, and chat window. Like I said, this is uh, Webinar 48. Seems like just last week that we had Webinar 47, and actually it was. Um, but hey, we've come a long way, all right? Um, we've had some great webinars, great uh, feedback from you, our uh, attendees, and we hope that will continue. But you can find our previous webinars on our YouTube uh, playlist, Build Your AutoCAD IQ, that's in the auto CAD Exchange YouTube channel. And one more little bit of housekeeping here, and that is uh, we get a lot of input in our webinars. Uh, and as well as this product support, we, uh, uh, we always get, hey, we want to have this feature in AutoCAD, or we'd like to see this changed. You can give input uh, on future releases of AutoCAD. Uh, by joining the AutoCAD Customer Council. Right, so uh, it's a great place uh, to give feedback. Uh, you can even preview uh, beta applications or uh, pre-release builds of AutoCAD and other applications. So uh, a great place to get that input um, and let Autodesk know what you want to see or what you want to see changed or what doesn't work for you. And this feedback does get addressed by the uh, product team. So, I mean, this is why we're doing this, so that we can get your input and uh, listen to what you have to, have to say. So, how can you do this? Well, you can get involved by emailing these addresses here, autocad.beta at autodesk.com, autocad.lt dot cancel at autodesk.com and uh, let them know you're interested and they will um, shoot you a uh, some more information on this program. So uh, prior to my working at Autodesk, I always enjoyed participating in the beta program uh, just to learn more about the product and give my input as well. Finally, being product support, we do want to let those of you who haven't been with us before here, who aren't aware of our Autodesk Knowledge Network, 
this is a location where you can find uh, support articles, you can find uh, downloads such as viewers, uh, free education software, troubleshooting, uh, hot fixes, uh, white papers, uh, all kinds of resources. In this slide deck that you can download later, we've uh, put a couple of quick links for the AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT uh, downloads. All right. So prior to the agenda, I, I would like to go ahead and throw out a few polls. And uh, here, and these aren't painful, okay? So I encourage you to give your input. The first one, for those who have been here, is uh, we want to know, have you uh, participated in one of these webinars, or are you uh, a first-timer here? And uh, quite a good turnout here. Uh, so 81% of you have been with us before in our webinars, and you know that's a good sign for us, I guess. Uh, and we really enjoy having all you repeat attendees, and we're very glad to have those of you who are here for the first time. So I'll just kind of show you that particular feedback response here, the totals. And I've got two more before we do our presentation here. So the next one is, uh, again, we run this one all the time as well, and that is, uh, what AutoCAD-based application do you use? And this is just to uh, get input for future AutoCAD webinars, or AutoCAD-based. Gives us an idea of what everybody's working with and what we can tailor this series to in the future, as well as maybe even you know begin an additional series for verticals or whatever. No promises made here. Just saying this is why we like to see this. And I'll go ahead and give you those totals. It looks like the predominant crowd, though, is the AutoCAD crowd, which is awesome. 23% are AutoCAD LT users. And then vertical applications take the next spot. And then 12% uh, on the architectural vertical, and 2% other. Um, kind of assuming maybe Revit or even a third-party application, obviously. So one more. This one is specific to this webcast. And that is, do you have the Express tools installed? And if so, do you use them? A lot of people really aren't too familiar with what is in the Express tools. Some of them, you, you know, some don't even have them installed. So it looks like quite a few have not even heard of them. So I'm hoping that's not because uh, the AutoCAD LT factor, and Dave will explain that shortly. So let me um, let you see the numbers on that one. Oops. All right. So... expecting. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about this data, but it is good feedback. <laughs> well, I'm sure that for the people that have never heard of them, they'll uh, be playing with them right after the seminar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there, there's some good stuff there. So, all right, so let me, uh, let me hide that, and uh, let's um, let Dave do a little bit of talking as uh, we talk this week's agenda. Okay. So the, the first thing, um, so first of all, um, I'm Dave Pothier, and I'm here in Manchester, like the slide said, uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. It's a beautiful day. Going to run a 5K road race here after work, so it's going to be exciting and, and uh, hopefully a good race after this. Um, so uh, how do we install the Express Tools? Um, just go ahead and hit another return there. The, the good news is, um, oh, so sorry, we're just going to talk about the identifier. So we're going to talk about how to install the Express tools if they're not already installed. Uh, one of the most common uh, 
tech support cases we get is uh, when people are getting unknown command errors trying to use Express tools, and I'll talk about that. And then we'll do an introduction to some of my favorite uh, commands within the Express tools. Uh, there's no way to cover all of them in this session, so I kind of picked and choose the ones I was going to cover. And um, you know, if you have questions about some of the others, you know, maybe we can get to that at the end. So again, next slide. Um, so. First, while, uh, while we're doing this as well, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the Express tools are. So, um, and I'll have a little unofficial quiz slash contest here to see if people uh, can get this right. So the Express tools were originally called the bonus tools. And they're not new to AutoCAD. In fact, they've been around for a while. Um, and be curious to see if anybody knows uh, where, which release of AutoCAD the Express tools or the bonus tools were first introduced. And if you want to throw that in the chat window, you can get an unofficial you know, pat on the back clap or something to see uh, who gets that first. But uh, so how to install Express tools? So in most of the recent uh, AutoCADs and the verticals, meaning AutoCAD architecture, MEP, et cetera, um, the good news is you can just install and Express tools are included right by default. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, if you are running an older version of AutoCAD, then uh, you may have to go into the configuration for the installer and actually turn on the Express tools. So there would be a checkbox that says enab you know, enable um, Express tools, and that will make it included within the product. Uh, some older products did not have that checked on. Some did. So um, people would install AutoCAD and say, you know, Express tools is not there. How do we fix it? And you just got to go back into the installer again, run it, and do uh, add or modify features and add that back in. So if you have AutoCAD LT, uh, sorry to say, but the Express tools are not available. And that's because many of these tools are still built using AutoLisp and things, which is not available within AutoCAD LT. The good news there is that a lot of the uh, Express tools that were in the product have actually migrated into AutoCAD, you know, AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT directly. So um, there's a lot more of what used to be Express tools in the past actually in the product. Okay. So the unknown command error. Um, this is, like I said, this is the most common support issue that we get. Uh, people, the, the Express Tools menu shows up. Uh, you're trying to use one of the commands, and you get unknown uh, unknown commands. And the most common way to fix this is just to um, basically uninstall and reinstall the Express Tools. So you go into uh, Control Panel, select your AutoCAD, in this case AutoCAD uh, 2016, uh, select, uh, uh, what is it, Add or Remove Features, and then uh, uncheck the Express Tools option and hit Update to uninstall them, and then basically repeat this and check the checkbox to install them back in. And most of the time, this will fix it. Uh, there is a link here in the um, PowerPoint slide uh, for a, a more detailed article about how to fix this if that uninstall, reinstall of the tools doesn't work. Um, so uh, if you're still having a problem, you know, pick on this link and we'll uh, be able to, uh, you know, you'll be able to see how to, how to fix this. All right, so let's we'll switch over to the demonstration and actually show my screen. So, if, Volker, if you can just confirm that you can see my screen. I can, Dave. Okay. So, as I was kind of saying before, oh, and actually, do we have a winner for, the, uh, for my quiz slash question? I'm taking a look right now. I'm not sure if. Let's see. I'm. I don't know. Naman, do you see anybody here? I well, if somebody got it right, um, it's, that's a. Probably good, and it can give you a hint. It was often referred to as the best version of AutoCAD ever. So it was, uh, it was first introduced in AutoCAD 14. Uh, that's R14, that's not opposed to 2014. 
And that was part of the bonus pack. Right. Yeah, which uh, which was uh, the precursor to our uh, uh, subscription program and Autodesk account now. Okay. So uh, the you. Express yeah. So the Express Tools um, is an Express Tools menu with uh, many of the Express Tools listed here, and I say many because there are some that are actually command line only, and I'll talk about a couple of those. Uh, it, but there's, if you're familiar with Express Tools over the years, there's a lot that are no longer here because they're actually in the core product. You know, pro programs like Batman and um, all of these layer tools for layer freeze and thaw and layer walk and all of that kind of stuff, that's all been uh, added directly into the core AutoCAD. But we're going to focus on a few of the uh, tools here from the Express Tools menu mostly. So the first thing I'm going to show, I'm going to try to basically start from left to right going across and I'll try not to jump around too much within various drawings. I'd be, have to switch back and forth a couple of times, but uh, we'll try to keep it fairly simple. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show is actually this command called re replace block. So my example here is that I have a bunch of doors. These doors are blocks and I decided that I really don't want these doors to be this simple version. I want them to be something else. So instead of, uh, I could always redefine the block, but maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want these in some places and some in other places. So we can use the uh, replace block option. And I'm just going to use the pick command here and pick the block that I want. So it selected it. And now it says, which block in my drawing do I want to replace it with? And again, if I had one visible, I can just pick it. If not, I select it on the list and I hit OK. And it also will ask me at the command line if I want to purge the old block from the drawing. In this case, I'm going to say no, I want to keep it. And you can see that it just swapped out my door with a kind of a dotted swing and it put a little doorknob on the door. And that happened for all the doors, all the single swing doors within my drawing. So really easy way to change out one block for another. Obviously, blocks have to be the same you know, built on the same scale and everything, or this isn't going to work so well. Um, there's a, one command that I'm going to talk about here called get cell. This is a uh, command line only tool. And what this will do is it'll build a selection set for, for, for you from uh, a given set of geometry. So it, this says, okay, do which, which object is on the layer that I want to I search through, pick that, and then what kind of an object do you want? So again, I'm just going to pick the door because I want to find all the doors that are on this particular layer. And what it did is it just built a selection set for me. So if I wanted to do move and previous, right, you can see I've got all of those single swing doors. So that's kind of neat, and but it involves a couple extra steps. There's something that's in the product now that makes this even easier, so you don't have to use the get cell command. Uh, if I just pick on the door, right click, and pick select similar, this is an awesome tool. It's actually, um, I think this actually started with AutoCAD architecture and MEP, but the, the concept was moved into AutoCAD some time back. So I pick on select similar, and it automatically builds the selection set for you, and it puts it into your active um, selection set into property palette. So I, I don't have to do something, um, you know, a bunch of steps extra to do this. Uh, also, if, if you type select similar at the command line and I go into settings, you can actually pick and choose which types of properties you're, you're going to use to determine whether or not something is similar or not. So if you don't want to filter on layer, just uncheck that and, and it won't uh, show up in your selection set. So we'll give you an example of where you might use this. Is uh, I'll go ahead and select on this double door. I'll do select similar. It puts it into my property palette and I'm just going to say I want to change the layer here to the doors layer. So now it's on the doors layer like my other doors. So that's uh, kind of the select similar tools. Okay. Um, so I've got another drawing here. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you a tool that will allow you to convert a block. In this case, like this floor plan is that actually a block that's inserted in my drawing. And maybe this drawing actually started out with this being uh, an XREF and, and the block got bound by somebody um, or uh, 
you know, maybe have a different version of it or something. Um, but I actually have, uh, and if you didn't have this, I could always W block this out into an ex extra file. I already have a file here that I want to use. So right, right now it's a block, like I said. And I'm going to come down here and use convert block to xref. And again, we could pick it if you didn't know which one it was. And then I'm going to select my um, block to xref. I think that's, oh, select floor plan. I changed the name of it. Um, so I'm going to select a floor plan. And it will ask me, do I want to purge the unused block references? In this case, I'm going to say yes, because I don't want all that extra overhead in my drawing. And it just converted this into an attachment. So it's now an external reference. So if you if you have a drawing that's just built up of uh, lots and lots of blocks and you want to start breaking up for performance reasons, you can just W block the block out and then use convert convert to xref and you'll still have the geometry but it'll be as an attachment. Uh, another thing I want to show is this uh, select uh, copy nested objects. So this will allow you to actually pick things that are part of a block or an xref. So if I want the geometry here that makes up this door, I can start uh, picking on the individual components and it doesn't pick just the, the block, it's actually picking the geometry. And then I could say I want to move it, copy it, whatever. So I'm just going to copy it here. And now we have the, these objects live in my drawing. I didn't have to trace over it or anything. I can just kind of select something from the XREF and pull it into my current drawing file. A uh, little bit more useful than that, I think, is this uh, list properties command. And this will actually uh, give you information about something that's nested in an XREF. So have you ever had a a drawing where you say, man, I wish I knew what layer that's on because I'm trying to you know, turn it off or something, but I don't know. If I just pick on this door, it'll tell me it's a it's a, a block, it's on the doors layer, and it's color by layer, and line type by layer. If I select on the wall, it's line, and this is on the AR wall layer. So if you need to make, manipulate the uh, geometry or you know freeze layers and things, you can do that just by using that um, X list command or list properties command. Okay. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show some of the uh, text tools. And there, are, some of these are a lot of fun. Um, going to start by just zooming into this little area here. And I've got a bunch of different kinds of text and uh, for uh, showing some of these features. Uh, the first one I'm going to show is the arc aligned tool. And this actually creates it's a, a separate kind of, a, of an object. It's called an arc aligned text object. Um, but it will allow me to take the, uh, this arc that uses a boundary. And you kind of get a little dialogue that lets you change options, you know, uh, what font you're using, et cetera, the spacing, and anything that you want here. I'm not going to go through every, all the options. And I'm just going to type in Autodesk. And you'll see that it created a curved set of text. Like I said this is now a uh, arc aligned text object. Uh, so it creates a curved line of text that follows that. So you know, maybe you want to create a title block or something, you can do that. And you can also use this to edit the text. So you just pick on the text and let's say Autodesk rocks. I better put a couple of explanation points there. And you can modify the text that's on that arc. So that's arc aligned text. Uh, this next one I'm going to do is uh, changing text case. So maybe I have some text here, and I just kind of cut and pasted something from the help file. Um, I've got some text, and I really wanted this to be all uppercase text. So kind of a, a common thing. Uh, we can use change case, select the object, this can be text or detext, and then tell it that you want sub, uh, sentence case, or lowercase, uppercase, etc. I'm going to say I want to convert this all to uppercase, and you can see that it just converted all of that. You didn't have to go back in and retype it or anything. Uh, so that, that's pretty simple. And you might say, well, Dave, what if you have formatting to the text and all of that as well? And this command will actually do a pretty good job with maintaining formatting as best as it can. So if I come back and I go back to change case, and I'm just going to select all of these objects. So I've got different fonts. I've got uh, um, some with color, etc. 
and I'm, I'll just go ahead and convert this to uppercase as well and kind of keep an eye on things. It's going to change a little bit because uh, uppercase text takes a little bit more room, but uh, you can see that it uh, still maintains the fonts and the formatting. Um, so that's a, a great tool for um, fixing up drawings, make it a little cleaner. Sometimes uppercase text is a lot easier to read than mixed case uh, on a drawing file. Right, let me jump back to demo two here. So I'd like to remind everybody here that we are at Autodesk, so we use Autodesk a lot. Uh, so this next game I'm going to use is um, Explode Text. So it's listed here as just Explode, but it's Explode Text or TXT Explode. And um, this only is, is, well, actually this will work for anything. Uh, what it's going to do is create a polyline outline of the text. So you can see it kind of generated a bunch of polylines here that um, represent what that text was. And if you want, you can go ahead and clean it up and you know, join polylines together and everything. But one of the most common uses for this and is uh, to build 3D text out of something. Um, so maybe you have a facade of your building and you want to put you know, the name of the company across the, the front so it shows up in red rings and things like that. Um, we can do that by using explode text. The font that you explode has to have a width to it. Right? So if it's just uh, you know, a single line, you're not going to be able to really convert that to 3D text. But I'm just going to switch to a little 3D view. I'm zoom in here to my Autodesk. And the command I'm going to use is called press pull. This is one of the 3D commands. And I'll select on the A, and I'll say I want this to be 0.1 units high, 0.1 units high. And if you look at this in conceptual, you can see that now that we have a nice little 3DA. And like I said, if you don't want that extra line, you could kind of join that together into uh, a single outline polyline boundary and do it. But it's a, it's a great way to create 3D text, and it's really very simple. Okay, go back to wireframe and go back to plan. So that's uh, exploding text and converting to 3D solids. Um, that you have, many of you have had drawings that are you know, really old uh, or created by somebody else, and you get a lot of text in it that's just um, the simple you know, D text or simple text object. Right? It's not a, a M text object like you probably would like it to be. So we have a command here called convert to M text. And convert to M text, you simply pick on the object. And if I select on it now, you see I'm getting additional grips and everything, and it's been converted to M text. So you don't you have all of the capabilities that you have with the M text editor, um, even though this was originally created as an old text object. So great command to use. I've got some simple you know text here. Step next step next step. Just to show you as an example here, there's a tool called Auto Number. So you get some, some um, text that you're pasting into the drawing. Um, doesn't have numbering, but you want it to. So I'm just going to select this in order. And there's a couple of options, actually. I could renumber based on the location. So you know, sorting left to right, if you want. Uh, sorting up, up and down, which you know, in this case, it would put you know, step as the first one. Or in the selection order. Since I picked it in the order I wanted to, it's, um, just explicitly telling it which I, which I want, so I select, select uh, based on the select order. And then I can tell it a start number and an increment. So you just put in the start number, comma, and then the increment. So if I wanted to start this at 10 and an increment of 2 for whatever reason, just to show you that it kind of does it. And then I can put it as a prefix or a suffix or you know, whatever. I'm just going to do it as a prefix. And now I have 10, 12, and 14 as my steps. Um, so a uh, great way to, to number things that haven't been numbered yet. Uh, text masking. So I'm sure everybody can see how clearly this text shows up in the uh, in my office space. So maybe you have a space plan and using solid fills or hatching uh, to show different rooms and you want to put a room number and room name in there, but you want to be able to clearly see that. Right, so uh, we'll come over to oops, wrong one. This drop down. So that's the the 
lower text drop down and we can select test test yeah can't talk text mask select the uh, the text objects and then we can select the masking type so here you can see we can do wipeouts faces or solids I'm going to use the default of a wipeout and you could specify the offset so how far around the text it's going to it's going to come on stay there and stay uh, put the, the wipeout around and you can see now that I have a nice hole in my hatch if you will so that uh, that text is really going to stand out nicely within that hatch or whatever happens to be behind it it doesn't have to be a hatch pattern so that's a, a great tool a um, couple other ones real quick uh, Enclose an object. This one's kind of fun and can you know, clean up your drawing, make it look nice. Uh, so we'll, we'll do this, and I'll show a couple different options here. And this works with text, M text, or attribute definitions. So I'll start off uh, just with um, uh, start off with this one. So I'm going to select that big that big piece of text, and we can give it an offset again. So how far around do we want to go? And then we have three options: circles slots, which I don't know why they call it slots, but I'll show you what that is in a moment, and then rectangles. So I want to enclose this within a rectangle, and I'll just hit the default there. And you can see it created a rectangle around my text so that I don't have, you know, we didn't have to draw it, it just did it for me. Kind of the more fun ones here, I'm just going to repeat the command, select this um, next set of text, offset, and this time I'm going to use slots. And you can see in this case, it put a nice little curve around it. So um, I guess it kind of looks like a slot, though, doesn't it? I guess that's why they call that. Um, so that creates a different kind of a polyline boundary. And then finally, maybe you want to create some kind of a tag. Just do this. And I use circles. And it'll put a circle around it. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, you can draw these yourself. But why do it when, when the Express tools will take some of the hassle out for you? Okay. So that's uh, some of the, my favorite uh, text tools. Uh, next, I'm going to move over to uh, some of the uh, modify tools. So I'm going to jump over to another drawing. And one of the, the coolest, I think, tool here, whoops, a little too far over, is this command called copy, uh, move, copy, rotate. And it really probably should be called move, copy, rotate, scale, because it also has a scale option, but I think moco row is a long enough command name versus moco row scale or something. Uh, so they just called it move, copy, rotate. We'll go ahead and select maybe this chair and let me turn off my object snaps. Turn them off. Okay. And I'm just going to give it a base point, and you see that we get all these different options here. So I want to take this chair, I want to copy it over here and rotate it down and then you know, uh, create another copy, et cetera. Uh, so we can do this all with one, one command instead of going back and forth from one command to another. So first thing I'm going to do is do copy. And I'm going to turn off, flow off here. Say I want it to be roughly there. Right click and do rotate. I want to rotate it in this direction. And then select copy and copy it down. So it's that easy, and of course I could use scale, but in this case, scaling a chair doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, so at one command, I was able to do all those various functions instead of going back and forth and back and forth. So it's a great, great tool. Um, it can take a lot of uh, redundancy out of your day-to-day -day work by just using that. Okay. So that was move, copy, rotate. I'm going to go back to demo two here. And I want to show this next one, which is stretch multiple. So that you've all had instances where you're trying to stretch something, and you really want to stretch something in one part of the drawing and something in another part of the drawing, but there's something in the way. So you can't just use stretch and grab things without unselecting a bunch of stuff. And you can't select multiple windows. But stretch multiple allows you to do that. I can sit there and select stretch multiple. And we could choose between just a crossing window or crossing polygon window. So it's kind of cool. Just going to say, I want to stretch from this. And it will leave this magenta box on your drawing for you so you can see kind of what you're selecting. 
So I'm, I want to stretch this stuff here inside the box, and I want to stretch that stuff. And I'm just going to accept that. And let's say I just want to stretch it over some distance, and you can see that both the lines and the box are stretched. It uh, can save a lot of time with not you know avoiding deselecting a whole bunch of stuff or doing multiple stretches or you know any any of that type of thing. So that was a great tool. Uh, this next one I'm going to show is fun just to watch. <laughs> uh, if I select, uh, da, 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 da. where are you? I know you're here. Flatten and extend a clip. Whatever. I'll just type it because I can't find it at the moment. It's called EX Trim. And what this will do is it will actually allow me to trim something just based on a boundary. So I don't have to, you know, if I was using regular trim, right, I could sit there and select these objects, and then you could start, you know, trimming off the, the lines, and, you know, you could even do some other stuff to make this a little bit easier. But this uh, EX trim uh, allows me to just simply select, like, the circle as a boundary, and then say I want to trim to the inside or the outside. I'm just going to pick on the inside, and it does all the trimming for me. Right? How cool is that? I didn't have to go and pick things. It just will trim based on the objects that are intersecting with one another. So that was EX trim. Oh, and, and then that is one that's only available at the command line. So make a note of that. EX trim. So that's a, a cool tool. This next one I'm going to show is uh, flatten objects. And this one is uh, is pretty neat as well. Um, I'm going to take a look at this drawing. It's also kind of a cool drawing. Got a little Stratocaster here. It's all 3D. Right? Um, if I orbit around and stuff, you can see that it's a, a 3D um, gu guitar. And uh, you can use Flatten to generate a flat 2D representation of this from any view that you want. It's basically going to, you know, the view that you're in is, is going to determine the 2D geometry that uh, creates the view, but it will be just a 2D drawing. So uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit here because uh, this command takes a little bit of time to process. So I've got a simpler uh, version. Uh, da -da -da. Let me close this one. Okay, I've got a simplified version called uh, Flatten Demo, and you know it's just some solids here, right? Nothing fancy, but uh, yeah, let's say, let's say I want that view there, and I'm just gonna use the Flatten Objects command, select the objects, and tell it whether or not I want to remove hidden lines. Uh, I'll say no, and it will generate that. 2D view, so it still looks 3D because that's what it was, right? But if I uh, okay, well, let's see, orbit, if I take a look at this, it's really just a flat 2D drawing. So if I were to look at that uh, Stratocaster as a after it's been flattened, okay, I'm just gonna use orbit again. Right. Here it is, just a, a flat 2D guitar. Probably doesn't have any, very good sound any longer, um, but it will generate that flat geometry for you. Um, it can be useful for doing elevations or sections or um, you know, just creating uh, construction drawings of, uh, of parts. Um, we'll do a great job doing all that type of work. So there's also a couple of commands that uh, I want to talk about that are also command line only, kind of file um, controls, and I'm not going to actually run these, but there's a command called save all, and save all will do just that. It'll go through and save every drawing that's currently open in your session of AutoCAD. Uh, if the command hasn't been, or the file, I should say, hasn't been given a file name yet, it'll prompt you for a file name, just like you would with a regular save. So if you have a bunch of drawings open, you want to save everything. It's actually a better idea to save everything in before you quit AutoCAD as opposed to quitting AutoCAD and saying yes, 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 yes. Um, so save all uh, can go through and save all of your drawings that are currently open for you. Um, there's a kind of the opposite of that is QQ, 
IAT, so QQIT. And QQIT will go through and attempt to close any open drawings. And if it, you know, if there's one that's been saved or needs to be saved, it'll prompt you if you want to save the drawing yet. And then uh, I believe this actually will also close AutoCAD for you. So you're done for the end of the day. You run QQIT, save anything that hasn't been saved. Kind of doing just what I told you not to do. You should probably do a, a save all first and then a QQIT, and it'll close everything and then close down AutoCAD. So that's a some nice tools for you know getting you out of out of the office at the end of the day and, and getting you on the road. Let me go back to demo two, my favorite drawing here. And in this time, what I want to use is this command called superhatch. This is really neat. So this command um, will create a hatch pattern out of images, blocks, external references, or wipeouts. And it actually doesn't create a hatch. It'll, it'll create a group, but it will. It kind of acts like a hatch. Uh, it's not associative, so if you um, update your boundary, you kind of have to re redo this command. But let's take show an example here. So I'm going to use super hatch. And then it says, okay, I told you it works with these different kinds of objects. I'm just going to use a block. And the block I, have, I want is called hoops. <clears throat> and you can give it insertion point and rotation here in the dialog box. But in this case, it's actually easier to do this kind of on screen. So I'm going to say, I'm just give it a star point. Uh, scale is going to be 1. Y scale is 1. I'm going to kind of give it a nice little rotation angle here. And then it says, is the placement of this block acceptable? Yep, it's fine. Right? If you need to move it, you could say no and move it. So I'm going to say yes. And then it wants to know <clears throat> what the extents of this block is going to be or this image or whatever. So you could use just a portion of a block, you know, kind of crop it off if you want. In this case, I'm going to accept the default of the magenta um, boundary. And then uh, you can go into advanced options if you want. You can you know, set boundary detection and island detection here. I'm just going to say exit. And then give it a, a start point, and it finds the boundary just like a hatch, the hatch command does. And say, hey, should you want to do this? Say yes. And there's my super hatch created out of a block. Kind of probably the hardest part of this was figuring out how to draw the block in the first place. But if I select on that, you see that it's actually a group of objects. So it's a, um, you know, moves as a single thing, but it's actually a bunch of individual things. So that's a, a pretty neat tool uh, for doing some complex hatching instead of trying to go into the uh, defining a hatch pattern and and which can be pretty com uh, cumbersome you can just use a block and use super hatch okay um, I also want to show this break line symbol so I have a couple of lines up here and I'm sure uh, most people are familiar with what a break line is but uh, break line um, you know uh, kind of lights here like Maybe this is 100 feet long, but you only want to show it 20 feet long. So you put some break lines here in the middle. So I'm just going to use break line. Um, you can actually pick your own block, but there is one in the express directory called break line that you can use. Specify the size and how much of an extension you want. And I'll just draw a line across here, hit the default, and it will create a, a little break line for me. And I can copy this over and then use trim. Okay. And there I have my break shown in, in my drawing file. So simple command. If you don't like this break line symbol, create your own, and uh, you're off and running. So you ever have a line type that you want to create but don't want to define it in the LIN file? Uh, we have a tool called, wherever it is, let's see, da, 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 tools called make line type. So pretty simple. Uh, in this case, I have, I've drawn a couple of lines, right? One a little bit shorter than the other, and I put a piece of text in the middle and kind of repeated it on the other side. And what I'm going to do is uh, select make line type. 
I'm going to select where I want to put this file. So I'm just going to overwrite one that I already have. And Express Tools, and I'll put in Drawings, and I'll just call this Demo 2. And then I'll give it a name. So probably want to call this something like Coal. And this is going to be for cold water lines. And then we'll give it a start point and an end point. And then I'll select the objects that make it up. And it just created that line type in my demo2.lin file. And it's also added that line type into this drawing. So if I use layer, and I've got a custom layer here. And just stretch this out a little bit. And I'm just going to pick cold as my line type. And I'll make that current so that we can draw on it. And then I close this. And now if I draw my line, you can see that I now have that custom line type that I created um, being used on that line, on that layer. Okay. So Really handy. There's a kind of a, a sister tool to that, which is Make Shape. I'm not going to get into that one yet, but that's for doing a little bit more complex line types. Um, so you know, keep that one in mind as well. And all of these tools are actually pretty well documented. Um, you know, if you have a question on something, right, just hit F1 on the tool, and it'll you know tell you all about the tool. In a lot of cases, we'll actually even give you some examples and stuff here. So you know, make heavy use of the of the uh, help on this, especially because the Express tools still aren't officially supported, even though we do the best we can to support them. They are not official part of AutoCAD. They're still an add-on. Um, so there's another one here that I want to show, um, just because it's a it's a great way to find out what system variables mean. This is again a command line thing. It's called sysvdlg. So system variable dialog box. And I have to tell you that uh, this may not be completely up to date. Some of these express tools don't get updated from release to release to release. But this will tell you, um, you know, where the thing is saved. So this is at this variable here is saved in the registry as a, as a string. Um, you know, AutoCAD version not saved. Um, so it tells you a little bit about what it is and where it's saved and, and what the initial values are. So if you want to see what the pick first command or system variable does, right, um, controls whether you select objects before you start a command, the initial value is one that's saved in the registry. Right? If um, you want to see um, OS mode, right, again, saved in the registry, um, stores the bit code for all your various interception object snaps. So uh, it's a, a great tool to you know figure out whether or not something is uh, drawing or, or um, system related. And you can also save out all of your system variables and then read them back in. So if somebody messes up your system variables, you can kind of reimport them. Um, if you are familiar with the latest version of AutoCAD, and I see if I can remember. Uh, I don't remember where it is, but there's a sysvar monitor tool, and this t probably does a better job of, of keeping track when something changes. You can actually have it pop up and flag you when something changes. But that um, it does tell you what the, the system variables do like that other dialog does. So that was uh, sysvdlg. And then the kind of the last thing I want to show here, uh, it's actually not an express tool anymore, but it's really cool, and I don't think a lot of people know about it. So I figured I'd, I'd go ahead and show this. Uh, if I go with this, this standards drawing, um, it's just a you know, floor plan with a bunch of th things in different layers. There's a command over on the home tab under layers. Like I said a lot of these used to be uh, um, express tools. There's a command called layer walk. And layer walk will allow you to kind of just scroll through a list of layers and see what's on each of those layers. So pretty neat that uh, you know you can see what's on what. Um, but even better than that, uh, let's say I wanted to create a you know turn off everything uh, except for my doors, windows, and walls. 
So I can select on door, scroll down here to window and wall, holding my control key, picking those. So it will build a selection set. And then uh, I can right click and save this layer state. And I'll say maybe, maybe I'm just going to call this construction. And for the description, I'm going to say walls, doors, windows. Okay, so it created a layer state. If I uncheck this, it's going to um, leave the drawing exactly like it is. If I check it, it's going to put the layers back to the way they were. But if I select the layers drop down here, there is a, a drop down for the layer state. So there's one called construction. So I can just set to that. And if you're using layer states, um, just as a simple tip, I c created one in this particular drawing called all on and thawed. So I can easily get back to all the layers on and off. So that's, those are some really cool tools um, that uh, a lot of people just don't bother noticing that it's there. It's not part of the Express Tools, so it is in AutoCAD LT if you're using AutoCAD LT, right? Uh, but it's a, a great set of tools for layer walk and layer states. So with that, I, I think we'll uh, kind of wrap up Volker and um, then see if we have time for some questions. Uh, I don't like getting wrapped up. Hey, great <laughs> presentation. Dave, and we had uh, quite a few questions, um, and a few of those we're going to let you answer uh, in a moment, but first of all, I am going to just uh, switch back to me, and we want to just conclude the PowerPoint portion of this, all right? And then we'll, uh, I, I don't know how much time we're going to have left, but uh, I'll try to make this quick. Um, so it is about eight or nine till the hour. So some additional resources. The AKN, uh, Autodesk Network, which I showed earlier. The Express Tool reference link, this is all the Express Tools in AutoCAD, and quite a few of them are not available. Are we seeing my screen? Sorry about uh, that. Yeah, now we are. I was just going to interrupt you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, a little dialogue. So, um, all right, so these are the two resources I spoke about. Yeah, the, the then, Express Tools reference has a link to all the Express Tools commands, so it's a, a great yeah. thing to keep on hand. Yeah, and many of them, not many, but there are quite a few that are not available in the ribbon. They're just command line only tools. So, um, Some of the um, upcoming webinars are going to be uh, building blocks, how to create blocks, if you aren't too familiar with that. Um, then after that, we'll be following that with how to add attributes to those blocks, and another uh, visit to our third dimension uh, series uh, that Steve and Victoria like to present. So please feel free to have your colleagues res register at our webinars landing page, and you can also leave additional feedback uh, on that page as well as um, so our landing page here. Um, we'll be doing questions, you can leave feedback on the current webinar, any future webinar ideas. You can also email us. Please, 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 please add build your AutoCAD IQ to the subject line. That way it goes to our webinar team. We have many webinar teams, and many of them really don't know what you're talking about when you send in your question. But if you address it to the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ, we will know what you're talking about. So, um, Dave, I'm going to run one more poll, get that out of the way. We need to find out if uh, this was worth it for everybody. Uh, did you learn something new today? And 41% uh, voting, 53% voting, 99% say yes so far, 66% voting. Wow. Another top-notch webinar there, Dave. Uh, we are getting a lot of positive feedback on that. I'll close this poll about now and let, just let everybody kind of see that. And then I will pass it back to Dave to answer some of these questions. So um, 
I'm um, glad to hear that people got something out of it. This is one that I've been, been kind of wanting to do, so this is fun. Great, great. So here we go, Dave. I have switched it back to you. And uh, hopefully that switched back to you. Uh, we all know I have my awkward moments. There we go. Hide that. Now you should see it. All right. So um, a lot of the questions here we were able to answer. Um, uh, and we did have a winner, by the way, on the release 14 uh, X bonus pack there. And uh, that was Donald Malone. I hope, I hope, Junior, I hope I pronounced that last name right, Malone. And a couple other people got it right after that as well. But let's get back to the Express Tools. Um, Naman, uh, feel free to throw out a couple of the questions that I may not be seeing. Um, so a lot of them were, do these work with AEC objects, uh, such as AutoCAD MEP or so on? That's a good question, because uh, actually when I was looking through some notes from somebody else, there was a big disclaimer saying, don't try these with AEC objects. Uh, may cause a sudden exiting from AutoCAD. So. Um, I'd say if you're going to try it, try it on a drawing that you don't care about first, <laughs> yeah. and then, and then, uh, you know, if it works, then fine. But uh, I don't think that you know these were not designed in any way to work with any of the AC objects. So if they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. So one thing about the Express tools is that they were developed by third-party, just end users. Uh, some actually worked for Autodesk years ago. A lot of them weren't really updated until um, somebody said, hey, we really like this, but nobody, you know, can, can somebody update this for us? Or the original uh, per, uh, party who developed it updated it. Uh, but many weren't even updated until they were introduced, uh, incorporated into the application. So they're old LISP routines uh, and unsupported for the most part. Although we do try to help you out, right, Dave? Right. right. Yeah, so um, that one right there. Um, what else is a good one here? Obviously, a lot of the questions were, hey, where are they in AutoCAD LT? <laughs> Yeah, unless it's been officially added to the product, they're not there. Um, they said that at the beginning, the Express tools are, you know, custom programs, and LT doesn't support custom programs, so therefore you can't have the Express tools in LT. So one person here asked, hey, can you go over that uh, a particular command, like make a line type again? And we just don't have time for that. Uh, I apologize. I wish we did. I know David loved to show it again. Um, check out the webinar. It'll be, well, we usually, we do try to get them within the day, if not within a few hours, up to YouTube channel. Uh, you'll have, you have that link already in the registration um, uh, reminder. So um, well, you can also uh, you know make sure you download the uh, the document that I posted. Uh, exactly, we'll be posting as well because that has a lot of the steps in there. So you can follow along between the video and the steps. Right. So um, uh, let's see. Uh, how do I? Okay, all the Express tools don't show only the drop down tab. How do I get all the commands to show? I'm the drop down tab. I'm not sure or if we're talking the f file, the, the, the pull down menus, or so maybe you could just on the interface show where they are and expand one of the ribbon panels. Yeah, so you think maybe they just have this minimized to tabs or something? Uh, maybe, but it won't so hurt just to show that real quick where they are. Yeah. Uh, which do you want me to show? Uh, uh, the. Um, uh, are we seeing your screen? I don't think we are. Yeah, I'm not seeing your screen. Yes, I'm just guessing maybe, um, you know, so the Express tools are just, uh, just ribbon, right? I don't think they're available in the, in the you know, without the ribbon. So make sure the ribbon is, is enabled. So type in ribbon to make sure that's available. Actually, the menu bar system variable uh, should show the express tools. Yes, it does. 
Okay. Yeah, it just says express though. So, but uh, hey, it's right on top of the hour. We do have to sign off. We really appreciate you guys being here. Um, it's always a pleasure to be able to show something uh, that helps um, show you some new tools, right? How to how to get some things done you may not have thought of. I want to thank Dave for the great presentation, uh, Naman and Victoria uh, for assisting and answering your questions. I wish we could have answered all of them. Uh, we know your time is valuable, so thank you again. Have a great week. And thank you all for attending. <laughs>